Thank you all for coming out, and welcome to our Veterans Day celebration here at Stockton University. My name is Jason Babin, and I'm the Director of Military and Veterans Services here. I am honored to be here with you today as we recognize our service members and veterans and re remember their many sacrifices. All week, we've been educating our community on what it means to serve through programs like our Veterans Monologues, our Combat Papers, and many other programs. Along with today's event, each of these programs was done to educate and to help our community better understand the great men and women who wear our uniform. I would now like to ask that everyone stand for the singing of our national anthem by uh, Barbara Branco. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed that the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the red pots we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say At this time, we would like to recognize all of the, those among us who have served in the U.S. Armed Forces to our active duty military personnel, reservists, members of the National Guard, and all our veterans. It is your service and sacrifice that has kept our nation safe and free. If you are able, please stand and be recognized today. Joe, get up. <laughs> Thank you. Regardless of which branch you served in, whether it was in combat or in peacetime, no matter what your job was or how many years you served, you deserve the recognition and thanks of a grateful nation. We can, we can never truly thank you enough for all that you have done for us. Still no barber, okay. Those of us who have served in the military understand the importance of leadership here at Stockton. We are fortunate to have leaders who are committed to helping our students succeed. And because of their support, we have one of the finest military and veteran programs in the nation. Please join me in welcoming our Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Chris Ketching. Thank you, everyone. Honored to give, give a few opening remarks um, to close out this, this fantastic week, um, recognizing our, our veterans uh, here at Stockton and throughout the country. And so, you know, our community has, has been committed to serving our military affiliated students. Um, we're among, I'm, I'm proud to say that we're amongst the best in the, in the nation, um, ranked number 24 actually in, in, in the country, but also that our, our, our veterans are amongst our best students. Um, collectively, they have w over a 3.0 GPA, um, which, which speaks to the, um, not only the focus, but also the, the, the intellectual contributions that our, that our veterans bring to our campus community. We have a large community of about 400 students uh, that are here at Stockton, so they're very much part of the fabric of our, of our community here at Stockton. The great work that is being done, not only by our, our uh, Director of Military and Veterans Affairs, Dr. Babin, but also our SVO organization. And I'm looking at Angel. Uh, standing there on the side, and many of our students that are here that are contributing to our campus community. So uh, we are, are, are certainly glad to have our veterans community here at Stockton, and we, ho we hope that you enjoyed the programming, the tremendous programming that happened throughout the, the entire course of the week, and to continue to visit us, come check out the, the, new, the new lounge space. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the new lounge right, right across the way that just opened. And, and, and again, congratulations, and, and know that we, we value all the contributions of our, our military-affiliated students here on campus. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Chris Ketchum. We thank you for being with us here today and for your constant enthusiastic support of our Stockton community. Our next speaker is a U.S. Army combat veteran and secretary of our student veteran organization. He is also a senior majoring in communication and media productions. He will soon be moving to McDill Air Force Base in Tampa to take on a position as a media analyst. Please welcome Joseph Gibbs. Um, I want to first say I'm Joseph Gibbs, so thank you guys for all showing up and coming. Um, before I start, I want to thank all the people throughout the week who spoke at the Veterans Monologue. Uh, Stockton PD Sergeant Linda Kinney, Colby Jones, Ali Maskin, Matt Faldetta, Jennifer Newsom, Anna Cavallari, Stockton Hospitality and Tourism Society President, um, Pauli Stablin, Tom Hortz, Tyreen Rajput, Haley Brown, Director of Women, Gender, and Sexuality Center, Laurie Dutton, Anthony D. Clemente, Jesse Matzinger, Julia Dake, I, don't, I hope I didn't butcher your name, sorry. <laughs> Haley McFadden, Rebecca Longo, Ryan Green, Usman Rajput, and Assistant Director of Student Development, Joseph Thompson. If we can all give those people a round of applause, please. Um, I want to start by saying freedom is not free. So um, that's something my sergeant told me, my commander always told me, freedom is not free. So everybody who you see in uniform has sacrificed something to give freedom, so freedom isn't free. Um, Veterans Day is a great day to celebrate men and women who dedicate their lives to protect our freedoms in our country. I am privileged to be able to attend Stockton, who uh, holds veteran students in high esteem. They um, always go out that way to help veterans, such as right now. I mean, we all sitting here because Stockton values veterans, and that's something I think we all can say we value veterans. Um, for me, Stockton holds a very place in my heart. People like Jason, Ashley, Karen, and many more who always go out their way to make sure Stockton students feel important here. So I want to thank them for also being in my corner. Um, as a father, a uh, full-time student, as a, a man, Stockton um, has been a bright spot in my life. It's funny because I wasn't even going to come to Stockton. I was looking at Rowan and Rutgers, and I went to a, a job fair, and I ran into Jason Bevin. <laughs> And um, he actually convinced me to come here. I was going to go to Rutgers and stay up in New Brunswick or Rome and stay up in Glassboro. And uh, Jason uh, had a way with words, I can say. He's uh, very persuasive. Um, he gave me a lot of incentive to come to Stockton, and he always told me how much Stockton values their student veterans. So I can't thank Jason enough for convincing me to come here. Um, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, organizations such as the SVO has afforded me a family here. When I came home, I didn't know how I was going to translate to civilian life from being a soldier. So people like Angel, Pascal, Tobias, Anthony, they gave me a brotherhood that I used to have in the military. So I'm thankful to have them by my side. And um, as a secretary, I'm thankful to be a part of this organization. So that's something I'm very thankful for. Um, lastly, I want to thank Stockton and um, all the administrators who I uh, come in contact with every day. Um, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys make me feel like I'm one of, I'm one of the star students here, you know. So I just want to thank everybody, and thank you guys for coming out, and um, happy Veterans Day. Great job, Joe. Really, really a great job. Uh, I would now like to introduce our speaker, Lieutenant Tracy Stewart and K-9 Hemi. Lieutenant Stewart and her partner Hemi graduated from the New Jersey State Police Explosive K-9 uh, Scent School in 2011. This K-9 team is part of the New Jersey Department uh, Detect and Render Safe Task Force providing assistance for Homeland Security, NGASP, and local law enforcement and bomb detection, bomb detection operations. L Lieutenant Stewart, began her career with Stockton University Police Department in September of 2007, and her proactive and community-oriented approach to police work has contributed to Stockton's success. Please welcome Lieutenants Tracy Stewart and K-9 Hemi. Honored guests, family, and friends. First and foremost, I'd like to begin today by recognizing all those among us who have been a part of the great brotherhood and sisterhood called the United States military. Our veterans, active duty, service members, guardsmen, and reservists. It's your service and sacrifice that has kept our country safe and helped protect our rights and our freedoms. 
If you're able to, again, please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service. Here at this remarkable university, each of us, veterans and alike, are extremely fortunate to experience such obvious support from administration, faculty, staff, and our students. They make it so incredibly easy to enjoy being a part of the Stockton community. This is one of the reasons that alumni like Officer Silvio and so many others like Sergeant Gilmore remain a constant with regard to service and giving back. In acknowledging our fine veterans, let us not forget our four-legged veterans. K-9 Hemi, K-9 Argos, and K-9 Billy would like to send a special thanks to them. Some of you may not realize it, but dogs have served with soldiers in the military in every major conflict. Their long history of service goes back as far as 600 BC when they were used to help stop an invading army. In World War I, there was a terrier mix named Sergeant Stubby of the 102nd Infantry, uh, and he was the most decorated war dog of that time. He went from mascot to hero after being smuggled into battle by his private, Private Conway. Stubby was used for detecting enemy gas, barked out warnings when enemy troops were near, and located wounded soldiers on the battlefield. Today, canines are used for a variety of functions in the military, giving tirelessly and unconditionally of themselves to service, no matter what the cost. Like our own canine Hemi, mili many military dogs are used to detect explosives. While this function is vital, they do give back much more. The warm feelings and emotional support they effortlessly evoke is invaluable. Their connections to their servicemen and women run deep. Most recently, K-9 Conan, a Belgian Malinois who served in 50 missions, he's only five, played a key role in the military action to address ISIS. Conan was also injured in the process but he did his job successfully without complaint and without regret. There are currently upwards of 2,500 military dogs in service today and about 700 serving overseas. Like Sergeant Stubby, K-9 Conan, and the millions of other veterans and military service members out there, we will never truly understand what they go through day to day, nor will we understand what they went through in combat. So I ask you today, to take some time to honor and appreciate them, to honor and appreciate their families, and honor and appreciate this great nation that has given us so much. God bless you all. Again, I just want to say thank you to Lieutenant Stewart K-9 Hemi, Officer Silvio, K-9 Argos, Sergeant Michael Gilmore, and K-9 Billy for coming out today and obviously bringing the attention to our veteran service members that happen to have four paws instead of two legs. So again, thank you for coming out. Uh, I would now like to introduce a colleague and friend of mine who works tirelessly to help and assist our service member. When I tell you she has one of the hardest jobs here, I am not kidding. She works tirelessly every day to ensure that our service members and veterans receive the support that they need to be successful. Please welcome Karen Matzinger. I'm a little nervous because my mom's here. <laughs> Over the course of my career at Stockton, I've come to realize that thanking a veteran for their service makes them feel awkward. You're not going to believe this, but a lot of vets don't know what to say to you when you, when you thank them. I have sat in the vets lounge and heard them debate this over and over and over. They don't want to be rude. They don't want to seem rushed. They want to be grateful, but they just don't know what to say to you. So they don't like the attention. And I can understand why they don't like the attention. 
I try to stay out of the conversations that they have because I have no right to voice my opinion on how best to respond. It kills me to keep my mouth shut. I know that thank you for your service is a mountain of a compliment, and I know that they just don't want attention. I want so badly to tell them how important they are and how their dedication and service has shaped our country. Americans look up to people who serve in the military as heroes for a reason. So this is my moment to thank each and every one of you for your service, and this time you can relax because you don't need to respond. Thank you to every member of the United States Army, Coast Guard, Marines, Navy, and Air Force who have been part of facing the many challenges posed by cyber, economic, chemical, electronic, weather, disaster warfare, and now bioelectronic warfare. Thank you to every person here who served in the Army Corps of Engineers, Jason, who helped maintain massive portions of our critical infrastructure. Thank you for building schools for children in foreign countries. Thank you to our students who regularly, regularly re deploy right here at home to provide the muscle behind major disaster relief. Thank you for being there for us on 9-11 and when we needed you to rebuild for after Katrina and Sandy, and more recently for flying your Black Hawk helicopters with specially engineered buckets over wildfires in the Western states. 7,000 Army soldiers were on the ground following Hurricane Katrina or Sandy, and 4,500 military personnel rendered aid during Hurricane Irene. Air Force helicopters saved over 8,000 people after Hurricane Katrina and air delivered electrical utility work trucks after Hurricane Sandy. Thank you to the service members who work in the U for the Army Medical Research Inst Institute for Infectious Diseases for being the nation's front line of defense against epidemics like smallpox, Ebola, and anthrax. Army research labs provided critical breakthroughs for military and civilian purposes, from sports concussions to world-class prosthetics after the marathon bombing. A huge thank you to the Army folks who developed battery life breakthroughs when cell phone manufacturers could not. Thank you for inventing life-saving equipment such as the one-handed tourniquet, blood cooling containers, and newly responsive prosthetics. And thank you, thank you, thank you to the Army members who invented a pizza version of military rations that can be stored up to three years. Thank you to the members of the United States Air Force who perform many roles that quietly underpin our American values and way of life. While also helping to underwrite our economy, you may not be aware of this, but the Air Force owns and operates the entire GPS constellation. Anyone who uses Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter owes a thank you to the members of the U.S. Air Force for the technology enabling those platforms. Thank you, U.S. Air Force, for the GPS system that gives me the ability to pull my f pocket phone out and instantly know where I am. We're indebted to you for how we travel, how we share information about on social media, <clears throat> and how we make financial transactions. The 35 satellites in mid-Earth orbit that provide unique global coverage are so well maintained by the Air Force personnel that few people ever even think about it. When you look at your phone to check your weather in the morning, the Air Force data is embedded in your app. Thank you to all the Navy personnel who protect global communications and web access. Thank you for leaving home to work on a gray-hauled ship floating on the high sea to protect what is underneath the water and hidden in plain sight. 99% of global communications th uh, flow through the undersea fiber optic cables. Because of the cable's intersection at certain locations around the world, they are attractive to many terrorists, pirates, and other bad actors, and our Navy personnel guard them against cyber terrorists. Back at home, Coast Guard works to keep the Western Hemisphere free from piracy and illegal smuggling efforts. Thank you to the Coast Guard members for protecting our ports and providing assurance to anyone off the Coast Guard that rescues on the horizon. If you've ever been in a boat and you've broke down while you're fishing and had to send a distress signal to the Coast Guard, you understand what gratitude and relief really feels like. Thank you to the U.S. Army Corps members who are always ready to protect American soil. A small part of the U.S. Navy Marines bring everything they need with them to get the mission done. While the Army has light infantry units capable of deploying more quickly than Marines, they require reinforcement supplies within a few days. 
A Marine Expeditionary Unit can arrive relatively quickly with all the armor, air support, supplies, and they need for an extended mission. Thank you for being brave and selfless and sometimes bored. Thank you for being willing to leave your home, your family and friends, and to travel, travel outside of your comfort zone with people that you don't know that well. You are heroes because you did things that other heroes can do. You are the embodiment of our fantasies. You're not talkers, you're doers. The men and women in the Air Force are the ones who can live in the wilderness with nothing except survival gear, defend themselves and protect others, swim in cold water, hike up a mountain with half your weight on your back, fall in love deeply, love another's cultures and customs and immense yourself in them completely. Not only assemble a gun, but also hit the target, build a school in a third world country and, and still manage whatever boring task you're given for that day. To wrap this up, each of you possess a greatness. Greatness is not only found in the moments in our history that are recorded and repeatedly retold in classrooms. Greatness is mostly achieved by the small acts, the unnoticed acts, the acts of men and women who ask for nothing in return but are willing to give you everything. Thank you for your service. And I have one more thing I would like to say. Is there anyone in here who has uh, supported a veteran when they were sick or when they were injured? Can you please stand? <laughs> Mom. Where is Ashley Jones? I also have a pile of roses for Ashley Jones. Um, she is Jason's left arm, right arm, um, about face, everything you can think of. She's very young. She hasn't been working here very long, but she has um, done more for the veterans here at Stockton than probably anybody in the building. So I have them here, and I will give them to her. So. And again, thank you, Karen, for being here today and for sharing those thoughts. Um, when I say again, Karen, uh, Karen does have a difficult job. She is the one that hears all the stories, hears all the emotions, the feelings, and stuff like that, and then helps those service members and veterans you know, with the knowledge and skill that she possessed. So again, thank you, Karen. I would now like to introduce uh, Angel Cordera, who will deliver a poem today. Angel is a Stockton student, the Student, ve student Veteran Organization President, now a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, and a mission ambassador, a resident assistant, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, obviously, Angel has been a great member of our group. Uh, he continues to be a leader, not just here at the institution, but outside of here with many of our uh, veterans and service members outside of here. So again, uh, please welcome Angel Cordera. The following poem is not one of my own work, so let me just, Stockton, don't, you know, get me for plagiarizing, but um, I think that this is a poem that a lot of people here, whether you're military affiliated or not, can affiliate, um, relate themselves to, so. And I'm sure some of you have heard this. So live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one about their religion. Respect others in their view and demand that they respect yours. Love your life, perfect your life, beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose in the service of your people. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over the great divide. Always give a word or a sign of salute when meeting or passing a friend, even a stranger, when in a lonely place. Show respect to all and grovel to none. When you arise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason to give thanks, the fault only lies in yourself. Abuse no one and no thing, for abuse turns the wise ones to fools and robs the spirit of its vision. When it comes your time to die, be not like those whose hearts are filled with the fear of death, so that when their time comes they weep and pray for a little more time to live their lives over again in a different way. Sing your death song 
and die like a hero going home. Thank you. While Veterans Day is a day to acknowledge the service and sacrifice of our veterans that are alive today, we would like to take a moment to remember the men and women who have served our country and are no longer with us. Let us never forget those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, that have given us the freedom we possess today. Please bow your heads for a moment of silence. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you. This concludes our Veterans Day celebration, but I would like to take a moment to thank all of our veterans who are here today helping us make this event happen. I would also like to thank Ashley Jones, who unfortunately isn't here right now, who is an invaluable member of our team and is one of the main reasons we are able to do the things that we do. Again, I'd like to thank you all for coming and wish you a great Veterans Day. Thank you.